In this video, we're going to think about why the Montgomery bus boycott was so important. On the right hand side of this slide, there's a picture of the USA. On the map, we can see the state of Alabama at the bottom and we can see where Montgomery is. If you haven't watched the video that I previously did on segregation, please have a look at that now because that will give you the background to what was happening in Alabama and in those southern states. On the left hand side of this slide, you can see a bus. Segregation meant that white people sat at the front of the bus and black people sat at the back of the bus. Now, if more white people got onto the bus, then the space for black people would get smaller and white people would expect them to give up their seats so that the whites only section of the bus would become bigger if that bus was crowded. On 1st of December 1955, Rosa Parks refused to move from the whites only section of the bus in Montgomery, Alabama, when more and more white people got on. You can see images of Rosa Parks on this slide. This is a form of non-violent direct action. She was breaking the law just by sitting on the seat of a bus. Rosa Parks was arrested and you can see that image of her arrest in the picture on the top corner of this slide. Rosa Parks was an active member of the NAACP. This was a pressure group, the National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People, and they took action to end segregation and improve the rights of black people all across America, but especially in the South, because they wanted to end the racist structures and practices and everyday life that black people experienced in America. After Rosa Parks was arrested, black community leaders in Montgomery called for a boycott of the buses. A boycott is when you just stop using something because you don't agree with what's going on. So this would mean that all black people in the area would stop using the buses. They just wouldn't go on them. And phones, radios, cars, television, all of those consumer goods that had become much more affordable and much more important in the 1950s really helped this protest to take hold and to gain momentum because people could communicate, people could see what was going on. And this became a huge, huge boycott. Here are some images from the Montgomery bus boycott that lasted almost a year. And during this time, black people walked, cycled, car shared, they did not use public transport. So African-Americans provided 75% of the bus company's business. So all the time that black people and any white people who joined in their protest were refusing to use the buses, those bus companies were losing huge amounts of money. The boycott was led by Martin Luther King Jr, who's pictured here. Protesters faced lots of threats and lots of violence from white people who supported Jim Crow and who supported segregation and therefore opposed the protests that were happening. But Martin Luther King believed that non-violent direct action was the best approach to end segregation. The issue of segregated state buses was taken to the Supreme Court, which is the court for the whole of America. The Supreme Court ruled that segregated buses in states were illegal. This was a huge and important victory for the civil rights movement and it showed the power of nonviolent direct action. It's the second example in a couple of years of the Supreme Court ruling that segregation was unconstitutional. The first example was in the case of Brown versus Topeka. The Montgomery bus boycott got lots of publicity in the media, in newspapers, in television, on radio, and Martin Luther King became a national civil rights leader. However, this wasn't the end of the fight for desegregation. One of the things we also need to think about are the Freedom Rides in the 1960s, which tried to end segregation on interstate buses as well. However, this is a huge victory and a really key milestone in the civil rights movement in the 1950s.